Welcome back to week five. In this segment, we will consider the implications of the transformation of the news and opinion reporting business. Internet and social media have largely increased the number of people involved in activities which until recently had been the prerogative of the media industry. Bloggers and citizen journalists have made their marks as reporters, opinion leaders, trendsetters. Does this mean that they are, for all instants and purposes, journalists? And indeed, who is a journalist in 2016? This segment will attempt to answer this question by considering the evolving standard and jurisprudence on the topic alongside the practice and governmental actions. So let's begin. There is currently no agreed international definition of journalism or indeed of what constitutes media at the international level. Indeed, this remains a subject which may even oppose people who are otherwise united in their defense of press freedom. We have seen in the previous week that there is an increasingly global position that journalists should not be licensed. This, however, does not translate into everyone agreeing on who is a journalist, particularly when citizen journalists and bloggers are considered. One of your readings for this segment summarizes the discussion that took place in a journalist meeting in 2011 and highlights the fears and concerns of journalists, in this case from the Middle East, faced with many challenges, including though the rising from the multiplication of citizen journalists. Based on my work and meeting with journalists from around the world, I will suggest that very similar debates take place today in many other parts of the world. So-called traditional journalists working for established media outlets have not all made peace with the idea that journalism may not be quite the established profession it used to be. It is not just a question of competition, by the way. As a journalist cited by your reading insist, it is also a question of trust, a question of ethics. Let me first highlight what is the state of art as far as defining a journalist is concerned. Internationally, there is a move towards approaching the definition from a focus on the functions performed rather than on the means used or the medium through which the function is performed. This broad and extensive approach, which includes online journalism, characterizes a number of legal developments at regional and national level. The UN Human Rights Committee, in its General Comment 34, which you have had the opportunity to read in previous week, defined journalism as, and I quote, a function shared by a wide range of actors, including professional full-time reporters and analysts, as well as bloggers and others who engage in forms of self-publication in print, on the internet, or elsewhere. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression clarified that the definition of journalist include all media workers and support staff, as well as community media workers and so-called citizen journalists when they momentarily play that role. So what the special rapporteur is saying that you don't need to be a journalist full time. You could just be a journalist from time to time and still be considered as a journalist. At regional level, the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe adopted in 2010 Recommendation 7 on the right of journalists not to disclose their source of information. And they, in that context, define a journalist as follow. A, I quote, 
the term journalist means any natural or legal person who is regularly or professionally engaged in the collection and dissemination of information to the public via any means of mass communication. B, the term information means any statement of fact, opinion or idea in the form of text, sound and or picture. The Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe has also called on member states to adopt a new broad notion of media which encompasses all actors involved in the production and dissemination to potentially large number of people of content and applications which are designed to facilitate interactive mass communication. The Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights defined journalism as well in terms of functions as, I quote, individuals who observe and describe event, who document and analyze event, and any proposition that can affect society with the purpose of informing sectors of society or society as a whole and of court. The European Court for Human Rights does not define who is a journalist, but it refers to the watchdog function of media and journalism. So here again, a focus on the function of the journalist. Possibly more problematically, it refers to journalist ethics, implicitly defining journalism with reference to some kind of professional standard. It has done so in a number of, of decisions where it states, and I quote, the guarantee that Article 10 of the European Convention offers to journalists with regard to reporting on issues of general interest is subject to the condition that they are acting in good faith based on accurate fact and provide reliable and accurate information respectful of journalistic ethics. So here the European Court introduces a new variable, that of ethics, and you may recall that uh, the journalist from your reading was also raising questions regarding the ethics of citizen journalism. What's happening at national level? The issue there is also uh, quite, is even more confusing in fact. We have um, seen that in the context of the United States, the US government has failed to adopt in recent years a federal law on confidentiality of sources because of the absence of agreement of who should benefit from such a privilege, that is, on who is a reporter. Similar problems, in fact, have occurred at judicial level in the United States. American judges have noted in particular that, I quote, the proliferation of communication media in the modern world makes it impossible to construct a reasonable or useful definition of a reporter, end of quote. So the situation in the United States is that there is no current agreement as to who is a journalist or is a reporter, whether at parliament, Congress level, or uh, within the judicial system. In the Arab world, a journalist is often defined rather tautologically as a member of the National Press Association or by reference to accreditation or license. In Uzbekistan, just to give you a different kind of example, a journalist is defined as a natural person who works for the mass media. In Belgium, the Constitutional Court confirmed the constitutionality of a law on the protection of journalist sources by broadening the application of the law. And it in particular defined the, um, the person who can benefit from the law as anyone directly contributing to the gathering, editing, production or distribution of information for the public by way of a medium. Here you have um, a fairly broad definition, again, focusing on the function. However, it is 
fair to say that at national level, there is no um, emerging definition across all of the countries. Uh, we can find that definition at broader regional level. NGOs that support journalists or journalism tend to define journalism broadly. For example, the American Press Institute define journalism as the activities of gathering, assessing, creating, and presenting news and information. The Committee to Protect Journalists defines journalists as, I quote, people who cover news or comment on public affairs through any media, including in print, photograph, radio, television, and online. Journalist association or trade union of journalists are divided on the question. Some of them, including in Australia, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, and the Netherlands, have considered including bloggers and citizen journalists in their definition and therefore in their trade union membership. However, globally speaking, at the moment, at the present time, the trade union of journalists tend to restrict their membership to people who work for established media. So they have not all yet adopted the broad definition, function-based definition that is being recommended by uh, regional bodies and by civil society. So in conclusion, it is fair to suggest that the trend, as far as the definition is concerned, is to focus on the function performed by journalists, meaning, broadly speaking, the collection and dissemination of information to the public, not to focus on the medium used, on the employers, or on the income, or on the education. However, it is also fair to say that this function-based definition has not yet become a consensual approach to journalism. For some, including the European Court, but possibly as well a number of journalist trade union, the definition really also requires espousing or following principles and ethics which ought to be at the heart of journalism. Accuracy, objectivity, trust, possibly in the form of a code of ethics. Before continuing with the code of ethics, let me um, add a word of caution. Bloggers and citizen journalists includes a very broad range of individuals performing very different activities, not all of which will qualify as amounting to the collection and dissemination of information, even less to the European Court emphasis on the public watchdog function. Not all blogging activities require abiding by a code of ethics as a result not even some very basic standard of civility online. The public should be able to decide whether or not to read them. Still, for those bloggers or citizen journalists who self-define as a journalist, who describe their activities as amounting to gathering, researching, producing, disseminating information, news, opinion. Abiding by the same self-regulatory framework as other journalists, including a code of ethics, may make plenty of good sense. This may be achieved through membership to a journalist union, where um, their work is acceptable from the journalist union standpoint. But bloggers themselves, in fact, have taken the initiative and developed their own bloggers' code of ethics, all of which are voluntary. This is a development which I think is very positive and highlight a maturity of the sector and indeed of the work performed by bloggers and citizen journalists that is very important. There are many benefits from the characterization of journalists. I'm focusing here on those bloggers and citizen journalists who in essence perform journalistic functions as per the above definition. Press freedom 
organizations have clearly highlighted for several years now that citizen journalists and bloggers perform functions which are no longer achieved by traditional media for a number of reasons linked in particular to the fact that the media may be too heavily controlled or may engage in uh, self-censorship. So there has been a displacement of real news gathering from the traditional mass media to the online world. This has even been recognized by the European Court for Human Rights, which in a recent decision on Turkey, Sengiz and Al v. Turkey, specifically stated that the YouTube platform was an important source of communication and that it permitted the emergence of citizen journalism, which could impart political information not conveyed by traditional media. According to the Committee to Protect Journalists, 199 journalists were imprisoned in 2015. Of those, the majority were online journalists. This was already the case in 2007, when CPJ, Committee to Protect Journalists, began registering the medium used. It will thus be particularly logical and important that these individuals, these journalists, operating in the online world, should benefit from the same rights as those formerly employed by established mass media. So what are these rights that these online journalists, bloggers, and citizen journalists could claim? The first and most important one is that they should not be licensed. We have already reviewed in the previous week that the licensing scheme for journalists are a means of control and censorship which fails to meet international standards and the three-part test of legality, valid grounds and necessity. Bloggers and online journalists, uh, citizen journalists, should also be able to claim that as journalists they do not have to be licensed. That's a very important uh, right. Second, bloggers and citizen journalists should benefit from the right to keep their sources confidential. I have already highlighted the importance of this right in week four and the fact that unfortunately, even though it is recognized by many courts around the world, it is also curtailed in many other parts of the world and undermined by increased surveillance and restrictions on freedom of expression. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights has recognized that bloggers and citizen journalists benefit from the right of confidentiality of sources. They've done that very directly. And I'm gonna quote from, from that commission right here. Every social communicator has the right to keep his or her source of information, notes, personal and professional activities confidential, end of quote. The term of social communicator is the first time I introduce it to you, but this is a, a term that is widely used throughout Latin America and is meant to um, offer a very broad definition of journalist. It includes offline, online journalists, bloggers, citizen journalists. They are social communicators. In Europe, a less expensive or generous approach was adopted by the Council of Europe. In 2011, Recommendation 1950 on the protection of journalistic sources indicates the need to extend sources protection to non-traditional media platform in line with changes in professional practice. However, the recommendation goes on to making a distinction for source protection between journalist and non-journalist, such as, I quote, individuals with their own website or web blog. The last category not being covered according to that recommendation by the professional privilege of keeping sources confidential. The Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe said 
that, and I quote, as regard in particular new media, code of conduct or ethical standard for bloggers have already been accepted by at least part of the online journalistic community. Nonetheless, bloggers should only be considered media if they fulfill the criteria to a sufficient degree. So altogether, the uh, Parliamentary Assembly and the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe do not reject the proposition that bloggers and citizen journalists may claim a right to keep their sources confidential, provided they conform to the function and ethos of a journalist. So in Europe, you have a far less generous approach to um, the protection afforded to bloggers and citizen journalists than you may find in Latin America, for, ex for example. These are examples that highlight the fact that globally those issues are still under uh, discussion, under debate, and we don't have yet uh, a final settlement around A, who is a journalist, and B, what kind of rights do they benefit from. To sum up, I have highlighted in this segment an emerging global norm related to the definition of journalist. And that definition is based on function performed rather than based on the medium use, the contract of employment or other attributes. This is an emerging norm. This is not a settled norm and that norm is not without its detractors. I have identified throughout the segment the fact that there are a number of individuals and actors who do not necessarily see journalism according to that function. This said, such a function-based approach to defining journalism match the developments regarding the production of news and information with bloggers and citizen journalists emerging as the major source of information for the public particularly in countries where the traditional media is controlled or censored. The implications are evident. Bloggers and citizen journalists ought to have the same right and protection as traditional journalists because they are increasingly the target of repression, imprisonment and indeed killings. Thank you very much.